All right, we're gonna go ahead and tackle the knee panel speaker swap. So I've laid out a couple of the tools here that you're gonna need. So a screwdriver with a Phillips head, the T40 to remove the door, and not removing it, but I am um, gonna remove the bracket so we can push the door out of the way. You need full access to the side panel there. Um, we have a seven millimeter box wrench, which you're gonna need for a couple of screws that are hard to get out. A seven millimeter socket wrench, which can be used to remove the screws also. You can choose either one, they both fit. An eight millimeter socket, which this is needed for one bolt. A 10 millimeter socket, this is needed for a couple of bolts. 10 millimeter box, which is also needed for the same spot, but it's still difficult to access. This makes it a lot easier. You're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket, and I definitely suggest with an extension. The two bolts are up inside the glove box area, so you're gonna need an extension on that. Uh, a pair of needle nose pliers, just to get out some clips that may pop off. A short stubby screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. A light is probably recommended to just shine on so you can see all of the screws, as well as the speakers. What I'd also recommend doing is noting down each of the screws that you're removing as to keep count. There is, unlike the JK, where there's five screws for the dash, there are a lot of screws for this. So definitely keep note as you're going along. So when you're done with the install, you can make sure that your bucket doesn't have any screws left into it. So let's go ahead and get this started. So this is how we remove the dash on the JL and JT. To make the job easier, I recommend pushing the doors out of the way, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. First step to removing the doors or swinging out of the way, you're gonna remove this panel right here first. This just pulls right at you. You can go ahead and stick your finger, thumb inside this, the hole here, just pull right at you like that. This will expose the uh, clip, the, the little hook that the uh, strap is attached to, as well as the wire harness clip here. So there's this red button. You wanna push this up like so. There's a black button underneath this little white bar. You have to push the black button in while you flip the bar up, push it all the way up, and this releases the harness. Next, we're going to remove the, uh, the strap from this hook here, swing the door in a little bit. That's how you release the loop from the hook. All right, next we're gonna remove this bolt right here. This is a T40. If this is your first time removing the bolt, you may need to release it using a, a handheld socket versus a little uh, drill that I have here. This may not be powerful enough to uh, break the initial factory seal on it. We've already done that here, so this bolt is ready to remove. And that'll just push right out of the way. Hold the strap here as you move the door out of the way, so that way the mirror or the door doesn't bang into the front of the Jeep, the fender. I like to take the bolt and put it back into the, plate, to the slot here. So first thing I wanna do, I wanna lift the steering wheel out of the way to access the panel down below here. This panel needs to be removed. Let's go ahead and just, this pulls right out, has the snap in, pulls right up one side reach up top here, or in the middle, and just pull it right out. Next, you're gonna remove this control panel here. This just has the compression clips in the, in the back there. You wanna start on the right side though. There's a little hook on this side, so you definitely wanna start on the right side. And when you're installing it, you wanna install it on the left side first, but we'll get to that. So let's go ahead and use our panel removal tools. I recommend having a couple of these on hand. So when one falls, <laughs> you just kind of go around, work it around the edge there, and then you can just pull it out, like so. Pull it right out, and keep sliding, and it's connected with these two wire clips here. This gets removed by pushing on the top. There's a release button on the top here, go ahead and push that in, pull that out. Same with on this side over here. There's a release button right on top here. We're just gonna press that in to pull that out. And we can set this aside. Now there are two screws holding the head unit bezel in. So let's go ahead and remove these two screws right here and right here.
To remove the bezel, you're going to need to use a Phillips screwdriver. Um, you can also use a 7 millimeter socket. And in fact, all of the screws that are going to come out here are a 7 millimeter socket on the exterior of the screw and a Phillips head inside the screw. So you can use either or. So to remove the bezel around here, after you've removed the two screws, just go ahead and, and reach them underneath and this just pulls right out with uh, compression clips. Work your way around the frame and up top. Easy as that. Now to remove the head unit, there are four screws in the surrounding um, brackets here. So these four screws are going to be removed. And just like that, the head unit just comes right out. Here's the back of the head unit. Um, there are definitely more clips here than if you're used to seeing the JK, um, the older Jeep models, um, but they are color coded for the ports, so it's not that scary. Now to remove the rest of the dash, it's not completely necessary to leave the head unit out. However, we're going to uh, just to create some ease of removing these panels here. Both of these panels do get removed, and I just don't want them to bump into the side bracket. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the head unit there. It's just as easy to put an input out. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the dash piece here. In order to do so, I recommend dropping the steering wheel and removing this one screw here. The entire dash from left to right is held down by the compression clips. However, there is this one screw right here that needs to be removed. So let's go ahead and take that out. All right, so next we're gonna remove this dash piece here. Um, this just pulls right out at you with compression clips all along the way. You don't want to lift up on it though, you want to pull out. So the best way is to start on the left side over here. Just grab onto their side of it with both hands and give it a good tug out. And just like that. <laughs> so what we want to do is along the way here are these, these clips, these uh, metal clips that should have stayed on. Um, just make sure that they all stayed on along the entire um, trim panel. Uh, as you can see here, one did not, which where it's going to be is right here. So you want to take a pair of needle nose pliers and just pull that out and slap it back onto here. Let's grab our needle nose pliers, go ahead and wiggle it out. You pull it out. So since when you, when you pull it out, this little metal clip, these little uh, teeth here are going to expand out. So you're gonna to need to push them back in to be able to slide it over the plastic trim piece. So again, with your needle nose pliers, just push those back in. And you can just push this right on. Next, we wanna remove these four screws that are on top of the gauge cluster panel here. So let's go ahead and get these out of the way. And this just comes right out also. Just pull the top part out, and the bottom part has a couple more of the compression clips. Just like so. Next, we want to remove these two screws here. Keep in mind that you know most of this dash has already come apart, the driver's side of it at least, from just sitting in the on the driver's seat. It does look like it's a daunting task. However, it's just clips and screws. It's a lot of clips and screws. But it is just clips and screws. These two. Next, we're gonna remove this trim panel here and push on the side here, and as it lifts up this lip here for you, you can use that as a starting point. Just kind of work your way down. And there's one more up top. I'm gonna to remove all of these screws along the side here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six that need to be removed. Just note that this one down here, it is the Phillips head and it is a seven millimeter. You're not gonna be able to get a screwdriver in here. So what you're gonna need is a seven mil wrench. So go ahead and start with that one since we're on it. Oh my goodness. Those six are out. Next, go ahead and remove the two screws underneath the steering column here. There's one here. And there's one right here. Let's go ahead and get those guys out. 
Now we've removed those two screws. The purpose of that was to be able to pull this panel up here is with one compression clip because there's a screw back behind here that we need to remove in order to take this panel off. Next, we're gonna remove this screw right here. This screw is in efforts of being able to take this whole panel off, this, this screen panel off. So let's go ahead and get that one out. Next, we wanna remove this screw underneath here. It is right above, as you can see, the, uh, the clip. There's a seven millimeter. It's a screw head as well, a Phillips screw head. Um, but the easiest way to remove that is with your seven mil wrench. Now that we have all of the screws off of this side of the panel, this panel just comes right out. Pulls right out like so. So let's go ahead and remove this connection. It has this red tab on the side here. We wanna pull that out. So you wanna slide this red tab out, and then you wanna push on the red tab and pull the connector out, like so. So now we have the dash disassembled, we can go ahead and swap out our speaker. This is removing the factory OEM speaker. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to remove that. Three Phillips head screws along the outside. And with that, speaker just drops right out and to remove the speaker push this little tab slides right out and there you go we're going to go ahead and install our kicker speaker into our, uh, our stock box so when you line up the wide uh, tab with the top right portion of the pod and then go ahead and screw in the bottom of the bracket with the stock screw just hold that into place all right, so go ahead and attach the connector. Slides right in. Installing the speaker is easy. Again, if you order a plug and play from Trail 7, we're gonna attach the connector. We're gonna wrap wire here in the Tessa for you. Go ahead and tuck the wire into the pod. Go ahead and line the speaker up. It says kicker on it, or it says K on it. Uh, go ahead and line up the bracket with the top right. So now that it's lined up, we have the tab over the one uh, factory slot up top. We're gonna use the factory OEM screw to hold that one into place. Go ahead and drill in the other factory OEM screw. With the provided self-tapper and the plug and play, bundle. Go ahead and screw this in. And it's going to pull that into position just like that. Again with another self-tapper. Go into the side here. Cover the speaker with your finger. And then one more up top. And there you have it, driver side KS speaker installed. We're gonna disassemble the passenger side dash. In order to get to the speaker, we need to remove the glove box first. Open the glove box, there's a little tab back behind here. You just push this tab in and pull it down and the glove box will slide right forward. You can just take it out of the way. So now to, to remove the dash, we took out the glove box. Um, in order to get the bottom part of this, there are screws up top here, but in order to release the bottom part of this, there are two 14 millimeter bolts that need to come out, which are inside the glove box up on top there. We can use our 14 millimeter socket here with our 12 inch extension in order to reach up inside the, da the glove box into the dash to get to these two bolts right here. These two bolts are holding the bottom part of the top dash together. All right, so now to remove all of this, we're going to remove the grab handle first, then we're going to remove the top piece, then we're gonna remove the airbag panel, and we're gonna remove a couple of screws in the glove box area. So in order to do that, let's start with the grab handle. And that starts with this panel right here. 
which is going to be taken off with one of your trim tool removers. Now there are two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here, an identical bolt on the other side here. And there you go. And this is attached still to the, the grab bar. So there's four screws on top here. Again, the Phillips or the seven millimeter. We're gonna use a Phillips screw. And we can pull this out a little bit. However, it's still gonna have to remove this bottom airbag. So let's go ahead and grab our panel tools and let's work our way starting at the right side. And I'll kind of work my way over. Um, this panel is a little bit difficult. And I'll grab a couple of the tools So I know this says airbag on it, however, it's just a cover. And it's a cover to, the airbag is behind here. So this is just removing the lower part of this dash panel so we can take these screws off. We're not gonna remove this panel completely. We're just gonna move it out of the way in order to be able to pull this panel up to access the speaker pod. So this isn't gonna come out all the way. We are gonna unscrew it completely, but it's still gonna be connected in the back with all of the wiring and electrical, and we're not messing with any of that at all. So with this aside, if you'll notice here also how the, the plastic pieces, not all of them came out. One of them came out, three of them stayed inside. One of them you can see right here. Don't worry about that. When we take this down, we'll be able to grab those plastic pieces and put them back into the uh, trim here. And then this does just, there are um, pressure clips holding it in just like so and we can get it out just to there. So you're not pulling it out completely, you're just remove, You're just releasing the pressure clips. So that way, once we get all of this unscrewed, we can pull this dash panel out. So that's it for that um, piece. It doesn't need to come out any further than just being pulled out from the pressure clips. Let's go ahead and remove the speaker connection from the lower inside part of the pod. You can push the button on the back side of it and slide the connection right out. And there you go. In order to find the speaker connector, you're going to look down on the bottom right side back of the glove box and you'll see the connection in the bottom side there on the right. And that'll be right there. Now to remove the speaker pod, this screw right here is holding in the top part of the pod. Even though we don't have the dash apart yet, we can might as well go ahead and unscrew this one screw here, which is in the top right side of the glove box if looking directly into the glove box. Now we have these three screws in the bottom of the glove box. We're gonna go ahead and remove them. So in order to remove this dash here, we have three more screws to remove in the front part. One is up here. One is right in the middle, right here. And the last one is right up here. Let's go ahead and take this top screw out. Now we're going to get this middle one out. It seems like a lot, but the more that we take apart here, the easier this is going to pull out so we can drop that pod down. So to remove this trim panel piece here, push on the inside. It lifts the lip up there for you and it makes it a lot easier just to slide and just pop it down. Pop the one up on top. One down below. And that slides right away. Let's go ahead and remove the outer Phillips head or seven mil screws. There's one, two, three, four, five. This bottom fifth one here, you're gonna need the, uh, the box wrench seven mil to be able to get in there, of course, because the Jeep is in the way of itself. There are these three screws on the inside that don't need to be removed. It's just the five outer. So let's go ahead and knock this out. Go ahead and use our box tool for the uh, the one that's down here. So after those five screws are out, that is that is all of the screws that are needed, all of the dash panels that are needed in order to flex this dash panel out of the way to get the pod out. There is still uh, two more screws holding the pod in, but let's go ahead and get this dash panel piece out of the way. And the way to do that just lightly pull up on the bottom and pull on the top. 
and it's going to pop right out. This is plenty of room to be able to access the uh, the speaker pod to pull the pod out. The last two screws to remove are right here on the side and also right here on the bottom of the pod inside the glove box panel. So let's go ahead and get this bottom screw out. For this I'm just going to use a little stubby screwdriver for access. The last screw is here, right in this hole. And we're gonna get up in there. Next, we're gonna pull this panel out. This, the pod has been completely removed, uh, unscrewed, disconnected, so this will just fall right out when I remove the, pod, the panel. Oof, just like that. Our pod is out. All right, so now we have the passenger side pod removed with the stock speaker on there. We're gonna go ahead and swap our stock four inch speaker for our kicker four inch speaker. This is KS series. Let's go ahead and remove this now. Remove these three screws and save them. We're gonna reuse them. Flip upside down, go ahead and pull it out. And this clip right here, we're gonna press this button on the side here to release it, and just like that. This is the stock OEM Alpine Premier knee panel speaker, and this is the Kicker KS speaker that we're gonna replace this with. I mean, obviously, just looking at this side by side, that is definitely a, uh, an upgrade over the stock Alpine. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install the ring first. Um, you're going to install this with the kicker symbol into the slot that's the largest. There's two thinner, smaller tabs. Smaller tab. This is a wider tab here. And this tab here on the bottom right, if you have the speaker pod oriented as if it were sitting in the Jeep on the passenger side, then it would be on the bottom right here. So go ahead and line this up first. Then we're going to go ahead and, and screw in the top two. We're going to leave this one out. We're going to use that one to screw the speaker in. Uh, I'll show you in a second why. So let's go ahead and get these two screws in first. We're going to use the stock screw, the OEM screw that came with it. Yep. Let's go ahead and attach our, attach our speaker connection. Go ahead and sit the speaker in here to where one of the tabs lines up. All of the tabs won't line up, but don't remove the tabs. So it's important to put this ring in first because the size, the diameter of the speaker ring doesn't necessarily fit without this. You need this ring in first in order for the speaker to sit flush on top of it. Even then, it takes a little bit of pressure to push the speaker housing in once you line up one hole. Then push this down to sit in there flat. Careful just to push on the ring itself and not on the cone, not on the ring, not on the speaker. Put your finger over the speaker to make sure in case the drill slips off, it doesn't puncture the speaker. And just drill nice and slow. Let's go ahead and install the other three screws. If you purchase the bundle, the plug and play bundle from Trail 7, you're gonna receive eight of the self-tapping one-inch drywall screws that you're gonna to use to screw in the other mounting points of the bracket. So for that, just go ahead and start screwing in. Again, be very careful, go nice and slow. Put your finger over the speaker portion itself to protect it, like so, and just drill the self-tapping screw right in. like so. And that's, that's a nice firm hold, but let's go ahead and put the other two in there. And there you go. This pod is now ready to install back into the Jeep on the passenger side. All right, so now we have our kicker speaker installed in the pod. We're gonna go ahead and put our factory pod back into the slot here with our new upgraded kicker speaker. So this is going to be the same thing, but backwards, of course. So first I'm gonna pull the panel away. I'm gonna slide the speaker pod up into the slot. I'm gonna screw in the bottom screw of the pod halfway just to hold it so I can get the side in and so I can get the top in. So let's get the pod slid in there first. 
like so. And for this, I'm going to use the um, the small little stubby screwdriver. All right, so go ahead and screw that in. Screw that in. Use our stubby screwdriver. You don't need to screw it in all the way, just screw it in halfway just to hold the speaker from falling down. You can rest it against the front. As long as the speaker itself isn't poking into anything, just be careful for there's no, there's no screen on there, but there's plenty of room in here, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. So we're gonna go ahead and install the side screw. In order to get that, you kind of sh shine some light inside there and line the hole up like so. And then go ahead and screw the screw back in. And you can go ahead and put that one in nice and firm. Now you can go back to the screw in the bottom and you can finish screwing that in. Now we're going to screw in the top screw of the pod that's up inside the dash. If you remembered when you lowered the glove box, it was on the top right side. So this is up on the top here coming into the glove box right in the top, right up here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and push the dash panel back into place, but just watch this little pin right here. This pin has to seat inside this slot. Um, so we wanna go ahead and push from the right side over to the left. And as you're doing that, you just wanna guide that into its slot and then push the rest of the panel up like so. We'll push your panel back together. There's little studs in the um, in the part that was not removed that'll that'll hold into place. There's five screws. Start with one there. And our fifth one, we do need to use the open box wrench, the uh, open or closed side, whatever is easiest. The seven millimeter. That little screw is hidden right behind this piece. Tighten that down. That's all set in there. That's aligned. I'm gonna give it a push just to snug it up and you're good to go for that. All right, so go ahead and push this up a little bit. There's three screws that are gonna hold this piece in. There's one right here, one right here, and one up top. All right, these three screws are in underneath the edge here, the red uh, dash piece. This gets snapped in first snaps right in and there's four screws along top and two on the bottom here. So starting up top, we'll work our way down. Now to move down to the bottom section of the dash, I'm gonna put these three screws into the bottom of the glove box. And then there are the two bolts, the 14 millimeter bolts that go up top. So let's put the screws in first and then I'll just go ahead and um, take care of the bolts up there as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our airbag trim piece back in. If you remember when I removed this, a couple of the pieces, uh, a couple of the tabs popped out. And like I said, you can always capture those later on because when you have this all apart, we, we found them, right? So here are the three tabs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tabs I'm just gonna slide the tabs back on to their, uh, their little posts here. Back onto the posts, back onto the posts. Or this um, little clip here just slides in the bottom. There's a slot for it to slide into and these just push back into place, like so. Next piece is we're gonna put the grab bar back on. The grab bar is screwed on using a 10 millimeter. So we're gonna go ahead and put the grab bar back on with a 10 millimeter. Now we're gonna reinstall our glove box. Glove box just hooks on down below and that just pushes right in. Now we're gonna install our trim piece. This of course just snaps right in and you're in. All right, now let's go ahead and start reassembly on our driver's side. So we're gonna start with this panel here so that's this guy. This is gonna fit underneath this panel here. So let's go ahead and set it into place. Make sure everything lines up, which it does. 
Now let's go ahead and connect our our controller wire back in. So this just reconnects in, push the locking tab, and reattach our pieces just like so. Now there are, there's a screw down the bottom here. This is the one that I recommend using the, uh, the box wrench on. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this one in here before screwing in the bottom one just to hold it so it's not moving around on me. All right, so let's go ahead and install, let's go ahead and reinstall the screw that goes underneath here. All right, now that that one's in, we're gonna go ahead and install the rest of the screws to hold this panel in. I'm gonna go ahead and push this piece back in. There's a little uh, compression clip right there. And we can go ahead and screw in the screw to hold this bottom steering wheel portion in. Let's go ahead and put these six screws back in. There's one last screw on the bottom. Again, you're gonna need the box wrench for this, a seven millimeter. And we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the trim piece now. Just like so. Next, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our instrument panel cover. And this is gonna go right on top here. This just snaps right in the bottom. And we have the four screws right on top. Now that we have the instrument panel, we're gonna install the dash piece. Make sure that all of the clips, all of the metal clips, there's two plastic clips in the very end and all of the pieces in the middle are all metal clips. Make sure all of the, the pieces have the metal clips attached to them. This one does. If they don't, if they're not attached to it, look inside here or down in the dash, but they should all be already attached. It pushes in all the way across. There's one screw right here for this to go back. Now we can reinstall the head unit. The head unit has four screws around the outside. Last piece to put on here is the head unit bezel. So let's go ahead and put that in. It's just clips on top and screws on the bottom with our last two screws. Go ahead and put this instrument cluster panel back in. Remember to reattach your two wires. One snaps into the left here, and the other snaps right into the right. Tuck the wire in, tuck the start button into its slot, and this just presses into place nice like that. And our last and final piece to put on is our bottom dash piece here underneath the steering column. And this piece just snaps together like so. All right, so there we have it. We've installed, we've successfully installed our new Kicker KS speakers into the knee panels of the JT, which also applies for the JL.